What's up boys, it's Shane here, and today I want to talk about Battlefield 4 and some honorable mentions for best guns. Um, I obviously did my best guns in Battlefield 4 video 2019 edition a few months ago, and it has been more recently been getting a ton of views, and a lot of you have been commenting weapons I forgot, um, saying that certain guns should have been in the video and they weren't, and I sort of just wanted to give some honorable mentions to weapons that I think either I forgot to put in the video, or weapons that are just on the edge of being some of the best guns in the game, and I think are really good and worth using. Using. Um, and some of them I personally don't like, but I saw that you guys, a lot of you commented them, so I decided to include some of those weapons as well. And again, just like the first one, there is a chance that I do miss some guns that you guys personally do prefer. Um, there's a ton of weapons in this game, so the odds that I'm going to get all of them are really, really slim. Uh, there's 150 guns pretty much in this game. Um, but most of these weapons, you will have pretty good success with them, especially if you can get used to them. And lastly, before I get into this, just wanted to say, let me know what kind of Battlefield 4 videos you want from this channel in the future. A lot of you have been subscribing after that uh, Best Guns in Battlefield 4 video, but there isn't too much I can do with this game. So, I know a lot of you are new to it, so if you wanted to do some, um, maybe me trying to find some DLC games and post those, um, maybe me like going over some old montages, or just some tips and tricks videos for you that haven't played it too much, uh, just let me know down below in the comment section. But the first gun we're going to be going over is a PDW that I personally do really like and I was kind of shocked that I forgot it in the first one to be honest, it kind of just slipped my mind, is the MPX. I really love this weapon, it's a pretty fast fire rate, uh, although not too fast, a uh, low recoil weapon that does high damage up close. It also has a really good hip fire and a fast reload speed and it is definitely one of the best PDWs. Um, now the next gun we're going to be getting into is the CS5. So a lot of you are mentioning this is the best close quarters sniper and I'm including a clip from one of my best montages from a few years ago where I'm using the CS5 because I definitely used to use it a ton. Um, so yeah, the CS5 is definitely a good close quarters weapon and you see me use it on locker here. I honestly did really prefer using it in hardcore as well um, since you can quick scope and be stealthy and stuff like that um, and when you're on Hardcore, you're pretty much never getting hit markers with this weapon, um, except at the really, really long range, you'll leave them with one health if you get a hit marker. But I just really love sniping with this weapon in close quarters on Locker and Metro. Um, next, we're going to be looking at the MTAR. This is another good carbine, definitely up there with the ACWR in style. It's a fast fire rate carbine that does pretty good damage, but it more just makes up for the, its lack of damage and it's just pure fire rate and speed. It has a bullpup design, but despite that, it still has a pretty fast reload speed. I mean, it has really good hip fire, and the recoil is not too bad on this weapon. You're not going to be beaming people at long range like the AK-5C, but again, it is a very good close quarters carbine, and probably better than most PDWs anyway. So if you're trying to use a weapon in close quarters engagements, I would definitely recommend trying out the MTAR if you haven't already. This one was definitely mentioned by a ton of you guys in the comments of the last video. And I personally do prefer using the ACWR and the AK-5C, but as far as like maybe a third best uh, carbine or even a second best uh, to compete with the ACWR, I definitely think that the MTAR is up there. So I included it in this video. Next we're going to be looking at the F2000. I definitely should have included this one because it's a very high damage assault rifle. This weapon fires very fast at around 800 rounds per minute, I believe. Um, and it can just melt through people. You see, I kill this third guy so fast. Uh, this weapon is a very, very good weapon. The only downside pretty much is its reload speed and some of its recoil at long range isn't ideal. And even its hip fire for a bullpup weapon is not insane. Um, but it's definitely a good weapon. And if you haven't tried it already, I believe you have to unlock it um, through one of the DLC assignments. Um, so you can probably just look that up on YouTube, how to unlock the F2000 if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a weapon worth using. And again, a weapon that just slipped my mind was the Scar H. This weapon is a tank. It used to be probably the best gun in the game, um, or one of them when it was a three shot kill. Um, but they buffed the time to kill in this game and made pretty much every weapon a bullet uh, longer to kill. And it definitely hurt the Scar H a little bit. So it's like a four to six shot kill, I believe. Uh, but most of the time we're going to be getting that four or five shots to kill. It has a moderate fire rate at I believe around like 600 rounds per minute. Um, but it is very accurate in uh, mid to long range. Um, and it can still tank people up close. And <laughs> you see me going for those uh, shorty 12G kills as well. Um, but yeah, the Scar H is a very, very fun weapon to use. If you haven't tried it, it's one of the first assault rifles you unlock. So it's not too hard. Um, 
to get going with it right away. And I would definitely recommend using this weapon as it's a very high damage assault rifle. Next we're going to be looking at the Gold Magnum. I have some super long range sniping, or not super long range, but I have some classic sniping, uh, just hard scoping onto a, an objective. Really how snipers would be in like the military, for example. Um, for example, the CS5 clips was just me running around quick scoping. This sniping is a lot more long range and a lot more classic battlefield. Um, but I do have someone rush me up close later in this clip. And the Gold Magnum, to be honest, is not a top tier sniper in my opinion. It's not that good in close quarters because its fire rate isn't that fast. And at long range, its bullet velocity does not compete with like the M98B or the SRR. But it used to be one of my favorite sniper rifles, especially when I unlocked it. Um, and a lot of you did comment about it, so I decided to include it. But statistically, it is worse at um, long range than the M98B, and up close, it's worse than the CS5 and the M40A5. But it's definitely not one of the worst snipers. It's a pretty mid tier sniper and it does everything decently. Like it's better up close than the M98B, it's better at long range than the M40A5. It's just sort of an in-between sniper rifle. It's not gonna be your best for a specific scenario, but it's pretty good at a lot of different scenarios. So I would keep that in mind. And I just kind of quick scope that guy as well. <laughs> So next we're looking at the AR-160. This is a pretty quick clip. I just got a nice three piece on Silk Road. Um, this weapon is a pretty good long range assault rifle. I honestly have barely used it. I didn't have many attachments unlocked for it, but I've heard many people, including YouTubers and stuff who used to follow this game, uh, talk about how good this weapon is at long range. So I definitely try it out if you're looking for a good long range assault rifle. Next we're moving into the Bulldog, and this weapon is an absolute tank. This was one a lot of people were wanting me to mention. Um, this is probably a slightly better version than the Scar H. Um, it is also a four shot kill similar to the Scar H, and its fire rate is not that fast, but it does have a faster fire rate than the Scar H. And for a bullpup weapon, it has a pretty fast reload speed. Um, you can run through people with this weapon. Um, it's a tank up close, and at medium range, it's pretty good. Um, at long range, you're gonna have trouble finishing people off, especially with the smaller 21 round magazine. Um, but the weapon is still a very good assault rifle. Um, I believe this is a Dragon's Teeth assignment, so if you don't own the Dragon's Teeth DLC, you won't have access to this weapon. Um, and the F2000, I believe, was second assault. So some of these weapons are DLC weapons, and that is partially why I refrained from mentioning them in the first video. Um, but since a lot of people do have the DLC, I thought I would mention it in this uh, honorable mentions part. And now next is the UMP45. Honestly, I ha had not used this weapon too much, but I saw some of you commenting it, so I decided I'd use it. And this is a very, very high damage weapon um, for the class that it's in. For the SMGs, this weapon, or the PDW, should I say, this weapon does a lot of damage. Um, it has a slow fire rate. It's very accurate at medium to even long range. Uh, but up close, if I threw a laser sight on this weapon, I would just be running around hip firing people. This weapon does absolutely melt people in some instances. So I definitely think it's a weapon worth trying out if you haven't, especially if you're looking for a better mid to long range PDW uh, than the ones that I previously mentioned. But again, boys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go through a few more weapons that I forgot to mention in the other video and a few weapons that you guys suggested. Don't forget to tell me down below what kind of videos you want for Battlefield 4 on this channel. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.